Bo, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I just wanted to ask you, you know, we live in an environment, a polluted environment, but what most people don't realize is that the pollution is not only outside of their home, but inside of their home. Tell us how this pollution can affect our health. Well, it, it, can, it can do so in many ways, and uh, the, the real gist of the, the situation is that the environment itself is quite polluted today, and most people don't realize that a lot of those toxins are coming into their bodies on a daily basis through the air that we breathe, the food that we eat, the water that we drink, and those toxins, um, the body is not as able to process them as it was many years ago because there's just so many in the environment today. And a lot of those toxins are then stored in the body, and that becomes what we call the body burden that we we all carry and the term that I use for it is called body pollution. So give us some examples, concrete examples that our viewers can relate to of s things like toxins and chemicals that can and should be avoided in excess. Well I guess the, the easiest way would just be to open up your cupboard and read some of the ingredients in the food that you eat and some of these words are so long you can't even pronounce That's them, right. you know, let alone know what they are and the body simply can't process it all so it's typically stored in the fat cells of the body right. where it can affect the immune system and, and the various systems of the body and you know can contribute to diseases that we suffer from today. What can we do to decrease the these the, the exposure and their ill effects? Right. Well, I think we can all start with the things that we have in our household today, the chemical cleaners that we use. There's natural cleaners that are are tremendously available today around the world. A lot of people spray their homes with um, disinfectants and deodorizers and those things are quite toxic, especially to young children that may be in the house. Um, simply opening up your windows every day to let fresh air come in through your home. And then of course, you know, when you buy food, read the ingredients and look really at what you're getting. And if you can try to consume more natural, organic foods, that's also a big help. And, and I don't know if it's available in Israel, but uh, a Everything lot of, is available everything in is Israel. Everything is available you in Israel. Know, you can a lot of, that. <laughs> a lot of um, Sorostel sell washes for fruits and vegetables that you can use to wash a lot of the waxes and the chemicals off those. And it uh, takes a little bit of extra time, yeah. but it's very, very well very worth, it, worth the effort, absolutely. What are food supplements or what are they used for and right. can we just simply take a pill in the morning, a pill at noon and a pill at night yeah. and get over and don't eat anything well, for the day? Unfortunately it's not that easy. Um, some people still believe though that of course you can um, get away with, by taking you know supplements without a proper diet. I don't, I don't believe that that's true. I believe that the foremost thing people can do is focus on a very good diet but no matter how good your diet may be today it's difficult to get everything your body needs for optimal health without using supplements and my belief is that supplements can help bridge the gap between what your body should have and what your diet is, is providing provided. for. Also I think a holistic approach to health and, and the three things I would say is number one your diet's crucial, number two regular exercise is crucial and number three um, what people don't may not realize how important stress is in your life and reducing the level of stress that you have in your life because that can trigger many different things that you don't even realize are happening. What kind of a drink do we have here? It looks a little bit like uh, Jägermeister with no, without the alcohol. Without the alcohol, yes, absolutely. Yes. Well, it's a, it's a botanical supplement called Intra, and it's designed essentially to provide your body with 23 plant extracts, botanical extracts. And if you go back in time thousands of years ago, you'll see that people did eat the plants that were on the earth as a source of nourishment. And, you know, my belief in, in studying nutrition over the years is that the body really has the ability to heal itself and to maintain good health in a lot of ways but you need to give it the tools that it needs to do that so if you give your body the proper nutrition the nutrients if you treat it with respect it will give you what you seek which is good energy clarity of thought and a long healthy life but um, you have to give the body the tools it needs to give you the health that you desire there, there is another point that I would like to stress you know there are a lot of health freaks and, and nuts out there who advocate using mega doses yes. of multivitamins all over the world. Yes. This needs to be put in the perspective because this is unproven and in fact some overdose of vitamins may be deleterious to you. Yes, absolutely. I've never believed in mega doses of, of vitamins in particular. They, I think, create chemical reactions that weren't designed to, to, uh, to be created in the body. Um, I think a moderate supplement is always the safest way to go. Okay, so we talked about the drink. We have some pills here, which are selenium. Mm -hmm. Explain to us what is selenium and what is the purpose of what is some kind of research that is done on these pills. Well, selenium is a trace mineral, and it is not as prevalent in the soil today as it was, you know, hundreds of years ago, and therefore it's not as prevalent in the foods that we eat. And the research that's coming to light is that places in the world that have low levels of selenium has very high rates of certain types of cancer.
And there's a study right now in the UK, which has one of the lowest selenium levels in the world today, to see if increasing the level of selenium to 200 micrograms per day or above, which is a high level, but... Um, it's the, not the toxic level. It's not the toxic level, you're right, but it's, it's higher than most people would get in their diet today. And that study is ongoing to see if selenium can help prevent, not treat, but prevent certain types of cancer. It's quite exciting research. Paul, you wrote this book called Fighting Body Pollution. Yes. What prompted me to, to write the book was to give people a very simple guide as to how they could fight body pollution or fight that body burden that is in each and every one of us. If you had just a few minutes to read three or four pages, there'd be something in there that you could apply to your life quickly, which would help you to, to live a healthier life. I've learned a lot. I'm sure our viewers have too, and it was great to have you on the show, and I'm sure we'll meet again. Thank, Thank you, you very so much. Thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you.